Want to learn engineering and science? Well, you've tuned in to the right channel. Hit subscribe and press the bell icon and never miss an update from us. What's up guys, Manas here. And today we're going to be talking about a very important method of constructing an ellipse. Now, this is what you call the general method. And there are two important things that have been given to us. One is the distance of focus from the directrix, which is equal to 50 millimeters. Okay, let me underline this distance of focus from the directrix. And the second thing is this eccentricity. This is in fact a ratio, very important. I'll tell you what that exactly is. This ratio is two by three. That means the value is going to work out as roughly 0 0.667. And that in fact is less than one. Now remember this, whenever the eccentricity works out as less than one, the curve that's going to form is an ellipse. If the value is greater than one, it's a hyperbola. And if it's equal to one, then the curve is obviously a parabola, the only option left. Anyways, now the first thing that we're going to do is this eccentricity has been given as two over three. And the formula for eccentricity is this distance of point from focus, that is F divided by the distance of same point from directrix. And let's say she is actually a point in the directrix itself. So the distance of point from focus is two units and the distance of point from directrix is three units. So two plus three, let me do this. Two plus three is equal to how much? That's five. Why am I doing this? You'll understand the reason eventually. Okay. So the first thing to do is to make this directrix and to make an axis. Okay. So a vertical line in the form of a directrix and this horizontal line in the form of an axis. Here we go. And the intersection of these two horizontal and vertical lines is what you call point C. Okay. Now the distance of focus from this point C is how much 50 millimeters. That means the focus will be somewhere here. All right. So that's the focus at a distance of 50 millimeters. Now two plus three was five. So what essentially needs to be done is this distance from C to F has to be divided into five equal parts. So that can be done very simply. You can place a scale over here and at a distance of 10 millimeters, you can make a point again at a distance of 10 millimeters. You can keep on doing so until it has been uh, divided clearly into five equal parts. Okay. Now comes the point of placing the vertex. Now let me write the formula for eccentricity once again. Eccentricity can be also be written as VF over VC. But why am I writing this? There is a specific reason. I'll tell you at the end and I suggest you, I advise all you guys to watch this video right till the end because whatever we are implementing right now, I'm going to be giving you an explanation of all of that at the end. Okay. So V is basically what you call uh, the vertex. Let me write it over here. Vertex. Okay, so the distance of vertex from focus is how much? It's two, okay, because eccentricity is two over three. Distance of vertex from focus is two, two units, one unit and two units. So this essentially is the position of vertex. That's vertex V, okay? So vertex can also be located with respect to this point C also. So from C, the vertex lies at a distance of three units. From C, the vertex lies at a distance of three units, one, two and three. So that's the position of vertex. No issues. Now what to do? You need to draw a vertical line from V whose length is going to be equal to VF. So VF is equal to VE. Done. What's next? I'm going to join these two points C and E. Okay. Something of this sort and extend this line in this right hand side direction, northeast direction. You can see now what now I'm going to be making points 10 millimeters away from V. Let's say this is the first point. This is going to be the second point over here. We are going to have the third point. Keep on doing so. And from all these points, I'm going to be making vertical lines, something of this sort, this way. The second vertical line is actually going to be passing through this point F. Now you can go ahead and take any distance. I've taken this 10 millimeters apart. You can take 15 millimeters apart or five millimeters apart. It absolutely depends on you. Now I found this distance to be very suitable. That's why again, keep on doing. So I'm going to be placing many points. Let's start from here. And let's say this point is one. This is one dash two coinciding with focus F. And this is two dash three, three dash. Keep on doing so. Keep on doing so. And that's finally finishing at 13 dash. Okay. So what's next now? Let me write something. Take arc, take arc of radii. Okay. And over here, I'm going to write put arc 
with with what f as the center so let me write this over here okay it's going to be very interesting take arc of radii 1 1 dash and then with focus f as center okay you need to put arc where somewhere along this line only this vertical line all right so watch this and then with 2 2 dash as the radius and then 3 3 dash as the radius you need to keep on doing so okay so let's begin now keep one leg of your compass at one dash other leg at one and then with focus f as the center you need to cut an arc over here in this one one dash line itself above and below all right then with two two dash as the radius two two dash as the radius again with this f as the center you need to keep on doing so so with f as the center cut an arc above another below again with three three dash three three dash as the radius so keep one leg um, of your compass here at three other leg at three dash with that much amount as the radii and with f as the center cut an arc above and cut an arc below okay then with four four dash as the radius with this f as the center cut an arc above and below keep on repeating this process keep on repeating this process okay okay and finally what happens let me tell you when you take this 12 dash 12 as the radius and when you take f as center and you try to cut an arc above 0.12 and below 0.12 it does not happen why because it just passes through touches this point 12 itself okay so this point is essentially the right hand side vertex of the ellipse okay let me explain you this once again if this over here represents the minor axis and this is the major axis then this over here is essentially this point 12 which can also be referred to as a vertex now later on we're going to be writing that as v okay and when you join all these points in proper sequence you're going to have a curve that is popularly known as an ellipse so that's it let me write over here okay now let's go ahead and write v over here rather v dash over here okay now just like there is a directrix towards the left of v okay at a distance of how much this is 10 10 10 30 millimeters towards the right of v dash also there is going to be a directrix okay at a distance of 30 millimeters but towards the right okay so what you can essentially do is you can keep one leg of your compass at c other leg at v then with v dash as the center you need to cut an arc and you need to draw a vertical line through this that's the directrix a dash b dash over here it was a b here it's going to be a dash b dash and that's uh, here it was point c and here let's say it's point c dash all right now let's say we want to have tangent and normal over at this point somewhere here okay let's say that the name of this point is point p okay so what needs to be done is you need to join p with f okay and then with respect to this line you need to make a line at an angle of 90 degrees something of this sort okay and you need at an angle of 90 degrees you need to draw this line towards the directrix and wherever it cuts the directrix let's say that the name of that point is t when you join this t with this p over here you're gonna have yourselves what you call a tangent and a line perpendicular to this tangent or this green colored line is what you refer to as a normal okay well obviously it has to be passing through this point p itself okay so that essentially is a normal absolutely perpendicular now as i have told you i'll be decoding each and everything that we have done till now all right so let us head over to autocad and let me explain you two important properties let me explain you this first property property one let me write it over here only property one says that the eccentricity okay let's say we select any point over here let's say that the name of this point is say p1 all right if you join p1 with this focus okay and if you try to draw a line say from p1 onto this directrix okay but this has to be perpendicular let's say this point over here is represented by c1 okay so the property of ellipse is or the conclusion that we can derive from this construction is p1 f divided by p1 c1 p1 f divided by p1 c1 is obviously going to be equal to 2 by 3 roughly this value is going to be working out as 0 0.667 roughly okay let's see we have another point over here let's say we have this point p2 and when you join this p2 
with this if focus over here okay and if we can have a perpendicular line from p2 connecting it with this directrix let's say this is c2 then again if you if you if you calculate this distance from p2 to f and from p2 to c2 the ratio of these two distances is obviously going to be again equal to this value 0.667 okay again p2 f over p2 c2 so that's a very important property of an ellipse the point moves somewhere along this plane in such a manner that it maintains its ratio which is going to be equal to always 2 by 3 okay so that's a very important property and the second property is let me explain you what that property is property 2 this says let's say we have a point say in the form of p3 okay let me join this p3 with this focus over here and just like there is a focus over here there is going to be a focus here also okay so this focus lies at a distance of say 10 20 units uh, to the right of v over here also we are going to have a focus towards the left of v dash at a distance of 20 units again so let's say this is f dash so this property says if you join if you have a point p3 somewhere uh, along this ellipse and when you join p3 with f and when you join p3 with this f dash okay and you sum these three these two things p3 f and p3 f dash this value is always going to be equal to this, this v v dash v v dash okay or you can also say length of major axis all right now let me prove all of this to you with the help of autocad okay so let's head over to autocad okay guys watch carefully i'm going to be explaining you this first property okay let's say we have a point over here somewhere here somewhere here we have a point okay right here okay let me join that point with focus f okay and let us join this same point with the directrix okay over here all right so what property one says is that this distance upon this distance is obviously going to be working out as 2 by 3 or roughly 0 0.667 let us check whether this is true or not okay so let me calculate this distance um, this is how much 28.28 okay what about this one this is 42.42 so 28.28 upon 42.42 let me check where is the calculator here it is 28. Uh, let me write this again 28.28 divided by 42.42 how much is this 0 0.667 so if you round it off to three decimal places this is obviously going to work out as 0 0.667 so that's true let us do this again okay uh, let us take some some other point let me write it let me minimize this so let's say we have a point over here let me join it with the focus here okay and uh, let me get rid of this dimension let me get rid of this also okay and let us join this with the directrix okay now again same thing same stuff this distance upon this distance again should roughly work out as 0 0.667 okay that's true let me show you why this over here is 42.99 okay and this over here is how much this is 64.48 42.99 all right 42.99 divided by 64.48 what is this 0 0.667 okay so the math is absolutely true all right doesn't matter which point you take this ratio distance of point from focus divided by the distance of point from the directrix is always going to be working out as 2 by 3 that is 0 0.667 all right now we come to property number two let me delete all of this yeah this this second property says that let's select any point okay let's say this point and let's join this with focus okay and let's join the same point with this focus 2 also okay now it says that this distance plus this distance is equal to this from v to v dash okay let's check whether this is true or not this distance is working out as how much 56.74 okay what about this one this is working out as how much 63.26 now where is the calculator 
the sum of these two distances is how much 56.74 plus 63.26 how much 120 now let us check whether the value of the distance between v and v dash is 120 or not let us check let me use this and this yes that's true okay so the second property is you pick up any point you join it with the first focus you join it with the second focus so pf1 plus pf2 is always going to be equal to the distance between the vertices or the length of the major axis you can say so this in fact is a very important property and i strongly advise you guys to remember okay copy paste this inside your mind it's going to be very important for you <sighs> so guys that was all from my side for today if you've got any doubt or query do write them down in the comment section below i'll be very happy to answer them and if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering drawing, then do share and like this video, subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video, you get a notification. Alright, so that was all for today. I'm going to be back with more such videos on drawing and mechanics. Until then, it's a wrap. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care, have a great day and keep drawing.